there are some super simple formulas for writing an abstract. And in this video, we're gonna go through all of them. Now, the thing is, is there's plenty of different types of abstracts. There's research reports, there's peer reviewed papers, there's thesis. There are so many different types. Here is my master's one. You can see it's just a couple of paragraphs. In my PhD thesis, there is, that's acknowledgement. It's like a whole page of uh, information. That's the abstract for my PhD thesis. And then for my peer reviewed papers, like this one, there's like just a paragraph or two. No matter what type of abstract you are writing, they generally follow this simple structure and formula. So the first thing is background. Then you may talk about the current state of the literature in no more than two sentences. Then a very important part is the problem statement. What problem is your thesis or your research report actually addressing and then you're going to look at the methods. What did you use to solve the problem? And then you're going to get the numbered results, like the nitty gritty, like the hardcore, most awesome result that you found. And then we're going to talk about implications for that research and those findings. Let's talk about each one of those right now. Okay, so the first sentence or couple of sentences for your abstract are so very important. What it does is set the background, set the scene, like a movie. You know those sort of like um, establishing shots at the beginning of a movie. That's what you're doing with your abstract. Now, this has to be one sentence. Um, now, in the past, I just like to say the broad sweeping statement that still encompasses my research, but kind of zooms out a little bit. Here's an example. One of my first ever papers here about water-based solar cell materials. I say, water-based polymer nanoparticle dispersions offer the prospect of addressing two of the main challenges associated with printing large area organic photovoltaic devices. There we are. So we already know exactly what we're talking about. The next one, which is the accurate thickness measurement of graphene, starts with graphene has emerged as a material with a vast variety of applications. Boom, there we are, one sentence right in. It's broad, there's nothing there, but we are setting the scene. You need to write one sentence to set the scene for your research or your report or your abstract in general, do it. The next thing you may wanna do in your abstract is talk a little bit more about the current state of the field. So just give a little bit of a feeling into what area you are going into. So for example, in the graphene thickness thickness measurement paper, I'd say a number of techniques exist to determine the thickness of graphene fields, including blah, blah, blah. So I talk about what people are currently doing. That leaves us then the opportunity to talk about the problem. So we've got background at the moment, a little bit of state of the literature, one or two sentences, and then we're gonna launch into the problem. And that is the hook that's gonna get people in to read our paper fully. The problem statement for your paper or your report is very, very important because what it does is it sets up the massive challenge that you have solved, the biggest one, like keep it to one. Yes, sometimes our research reports and our research papers, they actually solve multiple problems, but here we wanna get it down to that single big one. What is the main challenge you've overcome? So in um, my first paper or one of my first papers, um, I talk about how the efficiencies of nanoparticle-based devices have been inferior to that of the corresponding other bulk heterojunction devices. So there we are. I'm saying I'm not only solving you know, the uh, water-based problem, so I'm getting rid of the horrible solvents, but the real problem is that these water-based devices aren't as good as their um, solvent-based ones. Now let's look at the accurate thickness measurement, and often we see the terms but or however, but in here we see however. In the literature, atomic force microscopy has proven to be inaccurate with a wide range of measured values for a single layer of graphene thickness. So there we are. There is a simple standard problem statement. Use that as your kind of hook to get people in. In the next sentence, you should talk about your materials and methods. Now, this doesn't have to be anything fancy. You just have to go in and be like, we used this and this, we did this and this, we looked at this and this, we used this type of analysis, whatever it is, just one sentence, get it down. What was your main thing? Did you use um, you know, physical characterization techniques? Did you use chemical analysis? Did you look at social studies? Did you do a questionnaire? Did you go out and question people? Like whatever it is, just get that simple method down, like the most broad statement you can say for the methods that you use, that uh, will lead on to the next bit, which is the thing that people are really interested in, the numbered results. After you've talked about the methods, you're gonna be talking about the biggest thing that you've found in numbers. Just state it. 
plainly, clearly. No beating around the bush. Here we are just going to say, we found this. Put in as much detail as you can in terms of numbers, in terms of comparisons, but we are going for the one or two biggest things that your study found and leave it at that. We are looking for impact, not intricacy. The last thing you're going to talk about are the implications, the implications for what you have found. Now, does that mean that there is an area of study that needs to be further investigated? Does it mean you're correcting someone? Does it mean that there's a whole subset of other fields that need to be looked at or need to change their idea? Or is it just that a certain outcome now sort of like leads on to asking the next question? Whatever it is, you have to just make clear that the implications for your research go beyond a little bit more, and it often talks about further study, whatever. Like Ultimately, you need to say, this means this for the general public, for the field, for whoever it is. Now be very careful because I certainly had a tendency to hyperbolize, is that a word? This, I to go too big, go like too grandiose, no? tailor it back a little bit, make sure you do understand the implications and include that as one sentence right at the very end so that people understand the real world impact of what you just said. So there are all of the building blocks of a great abstract. Now, remember, all of this is given to you in far more detail. I've also got pyramids, diagrams, structures, tables in my ebook, The Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, if you want a little bit more substance. Now, even though those are the building blocks of an abstract, there are some other types of abstracts that just completely blow that out of the water, and it is incredibly kind of field specific. Now the thing is when I was writing my abstracts for very technical papers, I actually left out all of the introduction, the background, that sort of stuff. I went right in first sentence to what I found. So highly conductive interwoven carbon nanotube and silver nanowire transparent electrodes. Oh, brilliant. Doesn't that sound great? First sentence, electrodes fabricated using commercially available silver nanowires and single ward carbon nanotubes produce sheet resistances in the range of two, uh, four to 24 ohms per square with specular transparencies up to 82%. Now, the thing is, is that that is a very technical kind of journal and they have their own requirements for what I need to submit when I am publishing with them. Now, the thing is, is that each journal is gonna be different. So my recommendation actually, and this is the first tip, is to create a little cheat sheet for the journals that you publish in. Like go to the last sort of like 10 articles that have been published in that journal or go to the most popular for that year and look at about five or six of them and just sort of like follow the same structure. Now this is really important because not only when you submit to that journal, you know kind of that the, what they're expecting, that the editors like a certain kind of format, but also it just means that you're not sort of dicking around with all of the different like background literature if you just don't need to. So some uh, journals do deviate from the formula that I've given you, but like I said, create a little cheat sheet and and structure for that particular journal. And I think that's how you get in with a particular editor. So there we have it. There's everything you need to know about writing an abstract for a report, for a peer review journal, for your thesis or more. Now, the thing is, is that each one has its own little nuances. So for example, this one is much longer than one you would find in a uh, peer reviewed journal or a report, but nonetheless, you do still sort of follow the same formulas that we talked about in this video. Remember to give me a thumbs up and also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my ebook, The Ultimate Academic Writing toolkit as well as my insider forum. All right then, I'll see you in the next video.